had a couple of pods of dolphins come past, so couldn't ask for more really. Welcome back to Head to Wind. I'm Hannah Diamond and today we're going to be sailing the DM24, an up and coming racing trimaran. And we're going to see if it's as exciting as people say it is. to get in around Friday morning. In sailing, the start is the most critical part of the race. If you can get your bow out even just a few centimetres further ahead than your competitors, it can be the difference between claiming your place at the front of the fleet or not, because if you're just a few centimeters further back, you're in serious danger of being spat out the back as you fall into the dreaded dirty air of other people's sails. So today, this webinar is all about the start. Hi, my name's Andy Rice, and I'm enlisting the help of professional sailor Hannah Diamond to walk you through how to make that perfect start. So hello, Hannah, welcome. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm well, thank you. Just sort of bracing for some of the storms that are coming this weekend in the UK um, and looking forward to getting back on the water for some more racing as it gets a bit sort of warmer here in the UK. Awesome. Well, Hannah, you have achieved so much in your career already. Let's just watch a video of, of what you've done in your sailing career so far. <laughs> Head to Wind. I'm Hannah Diamond and today we're going to be sailing the DM24, an up and coming racing trimaran and we're going to see if it's as exciting as people say it is. So that's a little story of your career so far, Hannah. Olympic sailing, uh, world silver medalist in the NACRA 17. Really, really impressive. Volvo Ocean Race, Sail GP, and a lot of match racing, a bit of fast net racing, and you love sailing your WASP as well. Um, obviously, in all of those kinds of sailing, the start is really important, but of all the kinds of sailing that you've done, Hannah, where do you think it's the most critical? Um, yeah, I think that's sort of a really good question. And the skills that you need to get a good start across all those classes actually are quite different. So I've definitely had to adapt as I've changed classes, um, which I've obviously done quite a bit um, to make sure that those skills are still relevant. Um, obviously when you're sailing a fast boat perhaps you've got more options to escape um, and get yourself out with bad lane there's more options that open up more quickly um, compared to some of those slow boats but I'd say um, either between some of the big championship starts where you've got a lot of boats really busy and match racing where that starts really critical if you can just get ahead um, your time and distance is really really important um, that's probably where I think the start is most important. Okay, well, we've got a lot of people on the call today and um, whatever kind of sailing you do, a bit later on on the webinar, you have your opportunity to, uh, to put your questions uh, to Hannah about starting whatever it is that, that you sail. So um, we're looking to give you an insight 
into how the best sailors like Hannah approach the start. And we're going to give you some solid tips and rules of thumb that you can start applying to your own sailing. Um, and we're also going to be look at, looking at some technology later on in the webinar that can also be used to help improve your starts. Um, so, Hannah, what is the recipe to a good start? Give us some of the vital ingredients. So I think we can break this down into a few different components that will help sort of make sure that you're prioritizing the start nicely to make sure that you give yourself the best opportunity to pull off a good start. So definitely being as close to the line as possible is gonna be really key. Um, making sure that you're accelerating so that you're at top speed when the gun goes. Obviously choosing the favored end of the line is gonna have an impact. Um, and having that space either side of you, so both to leeward so that you can accelerate into that gap and to windward so that you've not got someone right on your hip straight away um, is also really important. And then it's all well and good having a great start at one end, but if you start at the starboard end and your strategy is to go left, that doesn't necessarily help you carry out your strategy. So your plan for the start has to fit your strategy for certainly the first third of the upwind, if not the whole of the first upwind. So I'd say those are some of the, the most vital ingredients to getting a good start. Great, okay, so let's dig back through those in a little bit more detail. Now, be as close to the line as possible. Um, there's, there's no dotted red line along the water to tell us where that start is. So we're, we're always playing a guessing game of, of knowing how close our bow, the bow of our boat is to the actual line. So, so give us some tips on how to be as close to the line as possible. Yeah, sure. I think um, it's sort of easy when you're watching events like Sail GP and things like that these days where they have the overlay when you're watching back on TV or something to think that, um, you know, actually that obviously would be a really useful thing to have. But um, for most people when they're sailing, they need to use some slightly different techniques. I think the first thing to do is to always try and sight through the line. So that can be done from either end. So if you're thinking of starting more towards the starboard end of the line, perhaps it's best to go and look from the committee boat through the orange flag um, down to the pin end, being able to see whether you can pick a transit on the land. Um, obviously, sometimes that's going to be easier than others, depending on what location you're sailing in. Um, but making sure that you have taken that site through the line um, so that you've got a reference when you're in the start line with boats around you to help you know exactly where you are relative to where the line is. Okay, great. Uh, now, be sailing as fast as possible as the start gun fires. Uh, we, we all know that's important, um, but um, how do we achieve that? I mean, there's everyone else is trying to do the same thing at the same time. Yeah, and I think that really depends on what type of boat you're sailing. So. Um, getting to know your boat really well. It's something that you can really easily practice on your own and it doesn't take a lot of time. So if you're sailing a single hander um, and say like a, a laser or something similar where you're just on your own, an aero, for example, um, learning how to get the boat to accelerate nicely, um, you can just sort of spend five or 10 minutes practicing that on your way out to your race, whatever level you're racing at. And that will really help you get to know your boat a bit better. That can be done all the way through to if you're sailing a foiling boat, knowing what angle um, you have to sail at to get up and foiling um, and how much distance you need between you and the line in order to be making sure you're hitting the line at top speed. So it's really boat dependent, but spending a bit of time getting to know your boat, how it reacts to either having boats um, above or below you. Do you need a lot of space or are you happy just with someone on your hip to just accelerate and go? Um, and how much time and distance you need between you and the line to make sure that you're up to full speed um, as the gun goes. We've got our first question in, and um, I think it's relevant to where we're at right now. So um, how much are you focused on your instruments? How much do you trust your experience and instinct at the start? Obviously very class dependent, but give, give us your thoughts on that. So I think for me personally, I grew up sailing dinghies um, with, sort of just a compass and nothing else. And I think those skills that you learn of being able to sight through the line, pick your transits and know where you are um, as much as you can do in relation to the line is a skill that once you've got it, you'll sort of never lose it as long as you keep doing enough sailing and enough racing. Um, so for me, I really do sort of trust 
my sites through the line um, and then I use all of the technology as a way to back up that information if that makes sense um, I think if you focus on one aspect of that too much and you've got to be make your, sure you're really accurate with um, where you're looking um, and there's obviously a lot of variables and you add other people into the start as well because it's not just you and your time and distance to the line you've also got distractions of boats either side of you um, so I think getting those basic skills of your transits um, knowing how to accelerate your boat really nicely are your sort of core skills and then everything else on top of that is a bit of a bonus which helps maybe with the consistency rather than just with the execution. Okay, great. Now you talked about space either side of you just then, and, and that's one of the other ingredients you mentioned earlier as well. So um, tell us about the importance of space around you and, and how you carve out that space on the start line. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good sort of question. So um, each boat obviously has a slightly different requirement for space either side of you. So I think having the space to leeward of you just enables you to choose when you accelerate a bit better. Um, if someone, if there's someone directly underneath you, then they're almost dictating when you accelerate, especially if you're quite close to the line. Also, if it's quite pin end bias, you end up sort of pointing at that boat just to leeward of you. So they're almost dictating when you can accelerate. Um, so that gap to leeward, if you can create that, either by coming in late quite tight underneath someone or by being able to be able to control your boat really really well while everyone else is sort of drifting sideways if you're able to minimize that a little bit and it doesn't have to be that you're not moving through the water at all it just has to be relative to the boats next to you um, if you can create a bit of a gap to lure it means that then you're in control of when you accelerate um, and build speed for your start and then in terms of the the gap to windward um, sometimes you can you can hear and you can feel that boat to windward of you and that can almost sort of make you feel a bit anxious you you have to have a bit of an eye on whether they're accelerating because obviously if they get their bow in front of yours it's going to be very hard for you to hold your lane so being able to create create a bit of a gap to windward i'd always say prioritize the gap to leeward um but if you're able to have a bit of space to windward as well that just takes the pressure off um and sort of stops anyone being able to make that jump on you with their bow forwards um, just in those first couple of hundred meters off the start line. Um, now, in terms of uh, favored end and working out which is the best end of the line to start, um, I, I heard a story about um, a guy who wasn't particularly good in the fleet, but he, he, he thought I must be getting it right if um, I'm starting near the national champion, which he seemed to be doing on a, on a regular basis. You know, if it's good enough for the national champion, it must be good enough for me. Um, anyway, th this guy ended up going to uh, a seminar um, given by the national champion and, and it, talking about his starting strategy. One of, one of his starting strategies was to find a lemon, find one of the slower boats in the fleet, and line up next to them because you're going to leave them in in the dust. And uh, so the guy sitting in the webinar realised all along he had been that lemon. So um, that is maybe another way to uh, to find space around you on the start line is find somebody less competent than yourself and and use them as your sitting duck. Is 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 that something that you would own up to having done, Hannah? Oh, definitely. I think um, in Olympic sailing, we have the luxury of racing the same people over and over again um, for sort of eight regattas uh, a year. Um, so we get to know the people who are really good at executing a good start and some of the people who we know are really good at accelerating. So you've got your people who you wouldn't necessarily want to start next to. And then you also can identify the people who perhaps um, would give you a bit of an easier option. So if you're doing quite a bit of sailing with the same people, then I definitely would say use that to your advantage. Pick the person who you want to line up next to, particularly if you're coming in late, if you haven't been able to find a gap and then you're looking for one quite late. Um, I think using um, that knowledge that you've got of the fleet is a really good way. Um, so I, I think it, it happens in all fleets, definitely, um, in terms of picking exactly who you want to start next to. Great. OK, we've got another really good question from Karthik, who asks, how do you take a transit if there's no...